Having the flexibility to view, add, remove, or change the properties of objects within your design is a very important aspect of a design software. And in this lesson, we will explore the design panel in Figma. I'm working with a document called designpanel.fig, which is available on your tutorial assets folder. So on the right side, we have our design panel. And when you have nothing selected in the design panel, you will be able to view any styles that are local to the file. You'll also be able to update the background color of the canvas by clicking on the color here. And once you do that, the color picker window will show. And from here, you can just click on any colors. Just like so. Let me go ahead and undo that, Control or Command C. You can also set the transparency of the background if you want to. You can um, click this um, percentage and if you put 50%, you will notice you can begin to see the checkered background, indicating it is 50% transparent already. If you want to disable the visibility of the background, you can just click on the eye icon here. Just be aware that the option here changes depending on the element that you choose. For example, if I go to our layers panel and choose frame one, you can see that it is this area right here. You'll notice we have a bunch of properties that we can modify. So this is the alignment section here. And what this does is to modify the alignment of the object or element that you've selected. In this case, this whole frame here along with all of its contents. And it's going to align this frame relative to its parent, which is if you look at our layers panel, it is this um, iPhone 13 Pro Max frame, which is this one. So if I select this align bottom, Alt S or Option S, the keyboard shortcut, it will align that layer to the bottom of its parent layer. If I align it at the top, Alt W or Option W, it will place it back to the top of the frame. Below that, you can modify the orientation size of the frame. You can change it to portrait or landscape if you want to. You'll notice that when I choose portrait, the contents also adjusted to fit inside the frame. And looking at the blue outline, you can now see that this frame is now in portrait. If you want to quickly resize that, you can um, just click this icon here to fit it. You can also modify it as a group. If you click this um, drop down here and choose group, and when you change any of these properties like the X or Y axis, if I hover my mouse over it, you can see that the cursor changes to a scrubby slider. And at that point, you can um, drag either to the left or to the right. If you want to change its width or height, you can also do so. There's also option to change the angle. So you just have to click on the field to type in the value. So let me just type in 45 and you can see that it rotated the frame to 45 degrees. All right, so I'll just undo that. You can also change the radius of the corners. So with the group here, whenever you change the properties, it respects the components inside the frame. Awesome. All right, let me just um, hit Control or Command Z a couple of times until we get back to where we were earlier, just like so. Below that, we have Auto Layout. And what that gives you is the ability to build components and frames that adapts their size to the content inside of them. So we'll go in depth on this when we used it on our other videos. But as you can see, if I add some vertical paddings here, the contents inside adapts. Again, I mentioned earlier that the option changes depending on the selected element. So if I double click this text here, you can see that the option change and you can see that some properties becomes grayed out. And that's because we are working on a text here. And you can see we have some text properties here we can change. We have the font style, the typeface, the font size, line height, letter spacing, paragraph spacing, you can also modify the text box properties. And down here we have the text alignment options. You can either center align the text or right align text. I'll just leave mine as left aligned. Finally, you can also align it to the top, middle, or bottom. If you click this um, three dots icon, you will have more option. And we'll go through that when we start learning about text. 
Now, if you're working with a lot of components, you can also use the design panel to locate the parent component. Just select the child component and on the design panel, you can see the icon for the parent component and just click that. And once again, it will show you the parent component. If you want to go back, you can just click this return to instance button. You can also detach this instance of the parent by clicking these three dots here. Finally, you can also adjust the size of these two shapes here. If I click the star, you can see that I can just use the scrubby slider to increase the spikes on this star. Same goes with our polygon shape here, just like so. Obviously, you can do a lot of things with the design panel. Just want to give you a preview of what it does. And as we go along the course, we will tackle each properties that it has.